Spirit freaks me out, so put the Holy Spirit in the closet. It's flapping all over the place. Right? So what ends up happening is we talk about the love of God, and we think we have like this relationship where as long as like as long as I'm good and as long as I'm holy, God loves me. And then all of a sudden, if stuff goes bad in my life, I must not be praying right. If stuff goes bad in my life, it must be because God's getting me back for something. If something goes wrong, it's I haven't prayed right, or I haven't prayed enough, or he's trying to get me back. And that's not how God works. That's just bad theology. Okay? When something goes bad in your life, it doesn't mean you're praying wrong, necessarily. Okay? When bad things happen, it doesn't mean God's getting back at you. God didn't come and say, hey, you know what? As long as you follow me and you pray the right prayers and you pray him enough, everything's going to be great. You know what he says in the Gospel of John? This is great. He comes and he says, in your life, you will have trouble. Not in your life, you might have trouble. Not in your life, if you pray wrong, you're hosed. <laughs> he comes and he says, in your life, you will have trouble. And you know what he says in the very next line? This is so brilliant. Thanks so much, Jesus. In the very next line, he says, I tell you this so that you'll have peace. <laughs> oh, well, super duper, Jesus. Well, that's just like skipping through a meadow of dandelions and getting licked by a puppy. Well, thanks. In your life, you will have trouble. Rest easy. And I read this over and over again. I'm like, what? what? Like, how does this? And do you know why he says it? He's saying it because he's like, you know what? It's not about, whether you have trouble or not, it's not about if you're saying all the right prayers. Like the reality is, is if, if you believe, if you fall into this trap, and it's a really, it's a common trap, it's a suburban gospel trap. Okay, if you do everything right, it's going to be great. And if you, do every, if you do anything wrong, you're just in trouble. Okay, and that's not the way it works. God's love is not conditional like that. It's just not conditional like that. That God is constantly pouring out his love to you. It, like, literally, can you imagine? Can you imagine? If Jesus suffered, then if we use that same idea, then we're saying, well, God's, Jesus suffered, so he must not have been praying enough. Anybody want to tell him that? He must not have been praying enough. He must not have been praying right, because he suffered. That's not the way it works. Suffering doesn't mean you're praying wrong. And I'll tell you something else about the love of God. God does love you. He loves you more than you love you. He loves you so much that he would rather die than risk spending eternity without you. He loves you that much. But here's the thing, and here's the thing that people forget, and I hope you never forget this. I hope that you ingrain this in your head. God does not just love you. He likes you. Like... Wait a minute. You rewind that real quick. Yeah, he does, man. He likes you. He doesn't always like everything you do. Oh, no. No, 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 no. But he likes you. He likes you. All those things that make you unique, all those things that make you special, all those things that you might even want to hide sometimes. 